This is the North Face Rowona 6, and this is the REI Basecamp 6. Let's first go through how the Basecamp did better than the Rowona. First, I found the base camp slightly easier to set up and it took me only about 17 and a half minutes, including staking and guying out the entire tent. On the other hand, the Wawona took me about 15% longer, coming in at about 20 minutes for the entire tent. Both these setups weren't too difficult, still pretty manageable as a single person. I love how all the different poles are color coded, all the pole sleeves are color coded, and the color coding even extends to the pole clips, the webbings, and even the rain flag grommets or buckles, depending on which tent you're setting up. However, the Wawona took slightly longer because of the rain fly. It has a lot of fabric and pole clips, which always catch either on the tent fabric or the poles. So setting up the rain fly on my own takes me two attempts, sometimes even three attempts at getting it up, which really slows down the setup process quite a bit. On the other hand, for my base camp, it took me only one try to get the entire rain fly up on my own, no problem at all. Second, the base camp has almost 10% more base area than the Wawona, coming in at about 82.5 square feet, while the Wawona had slightly less than 76 square feet. And these are both six-person tents. Also, I found the base camp dimensions to be quite accurate, at most one inch off. On the other hand, I measured the length of my Wawona 6 to be about 116 inches, and the width to be about 94 inches, which is strangely quite a few inches off, and I got a much smaller base area than I thought I would get. But the plus side for the Wawona here is that it has a rectangular base area, so I was able to fit two almost queen-size beds inside the tent. As for the base camp though, it has a square base area of about 109 by 109 inches, so I was able to fit a maximum of just one queen bed. I also really like that the base camp has two huge doors, each measuring about 74 inches in length by 59 inches in width and takes up almost the entire wall of the tent. In fact, I could even just open each door only halfway and still have plenty of space to get in and out of the tent. I also really liked that I could unzip the door almost completely, leaving just this little bit of fabric attached to the top of the tent. And when the door is open, I could stuff the door fabric into one of the pockets over the door, which is much more user-friendly than having toggles, which is what I found on the Wimona. It takes 3 to 4x more time to tie the door up using toggles than just stuffing it into a door pocket. And the Wawona doesn't even have two huge doors like the base cap. While the front door is amazing with no cons, the back door on the other hand is super small and not as user friendly. To keep this door open, you gotta unzip not just the door fabric, you gotta unzip the inner window fabric as well, then you gotta tie up the inner window fabric first before you can tie up the door fabric. And while we're on the topic, the zipper quality in the base camp is slightly better than the Wawona. Both of the base camp's doors come with two YKK zippers each, while the Wawona's zipper quality is only SBS, which is a grade lower than YKK. However, just take note that the base camp's YKK zippers are found only on the doors of the tent and not the windows. The windows have no grand zippers instead. But to me, that's okay because you don't typically put a lot of strain on the windows, and it's more important that the doors have branded zippers than the windows. The zippers on the Wawona's windows are SBS2, like the doors. Another awesome pro that the base camp has over the Wawona is the amount of storage. It has a whopping 14 pockets all around the tent. Most of these pockets are pretty huge, and some of these pockets run all around the tent except for where you have the doors and the vents here. On top of that, the base camp also has a whopping 20 loops around the tent. There's one loop right at the top center of this base camp, and another four loops around it. There are even more loops along the sides of the tent, just these two walls have a total of six loops like so, and the other two walls of the tent are the same as well. Plus, the port here has three more loops like so. On the other hand, the Wawona has just 9 pockets and 8 loops, so 17 altogether, which is literally half of the base camp's 34 pockets and loops. Both the base camp and the Wawona have 4 vents in total. The Wawona has 2 window vents here, and it also has 2 of these smaller vents right here. The base camp has 2 of these roof vents, and the other 2 are these floor vents, so also 4 vents. 
But the main important difference is that I could open and shut all of the base camp's vents from the inside of the tent. So when I got horizontal rain from my rain test, I could shut easily the vent at the top of the tent from the inside. On the other hand, I couldn't do so for the Wawona. They're all accessible only from the outside, which will be a pain in horizontal rain. The same goes for the windows of the base camp. I had two windows in this tent, one window on each door, and I could open and shut the window from the inside of the tent, which you'd think is pretty standard practice, right? But here's the weird bit. Here are two of the windows in the Wawona, up close, here's all the mesh, and there's actually no way that I could open them from the inside. So whenever I wanted to open these side windows, I had to go out of the tent and open them like so. I'm not really sure why they did it this way, but it was a little bit annoying. I'd recommend just using this loop at the bottom of each window to guy out the bonus windows. That way I still got some ventilation on hot days, plus rainy days as well, and I didn't have to run outside to shut the windows when it started raining. Another significant difference between the base camp and the Wawona is the length of the rainfly. The base camp has a really nice full length rainfly, which extends almost all the way down to the ground. In fact, this was the main reason the base camp did so well in my one hour heavy rain test. The rainfly provided almost full coverage protection from the rain and it protected the inner tent really well. Notice that the water drips off the rainfly and onto the ground directly without touching the inner tent body too much. The Wawona, on the other hand, has only a partial rainfly. It doesn't extend all the way down to the ground. In fact, the rainfly doesn't even overlap the window mesh very much, probably only 4 to 5 inches or so, like this, so this might be an issue in horizontal rain. Overall, I'd pick the base camp over the Wawona if I'm planning to camp in the shoulder season with colder temperatures. There are three main reasons why. First, there isn't a whole lot of mesh on this base camp. It's definitely more fabric than mesh, so it helps to keep the heat in. Second, on top of not having a lot of mesh, it also has the full length rainfly, so very nicely double walled, and this keeps the heat in even more. And third, there are four vents in the tent, but they aren't very big, and you can open and shut them anytime to keep the heat in as well. So the base camp is a really good choice for shoulder season camping, though I found it a little bit hot and stuffy in the summer. While the base camp is definitely more of a 3 plus season tent, which I wouldn't exactly recommend for hot summer days because I found it a little bit stuffy, the Wawona is more of a 3 season tent for camping mainly in summer and now we're going to go through all the different ways that the Wawona trumps the base camp. When it comes to hot day ventilation, the Wawona has a ton of it. First, the front wall of the tent, a good 3 quarters of it, anything above here, is made of mesh for tons of ventilation. On top of that, the four walls of the tent all have mesh panels that join together at the top, and you can even open the back window for more ventilation. On the other hand, the base camp has just a rather tiny skylight, plus two not even half door windows, and also two triangle mesh panels at the bottom of the tent. Here's what the base camp looks like from the outside, and when you compare it to the Wawona, I think you can tell that there's not a whole lot of mesh. The Wawona isn't great at just hot day ventilation, it's also great at rain protection for two main reasons. First, I put my Wawona through days of thunderstorms, the heaviest rain I've seen all year. It was so bad that my entire yard got completely flooded. The entire bottom of the Wawona was sitting in inches of water, and this tent still passed with absolutely flying colors. And second, you don't have to seal a single seam yourself in the Wawona. Even when my Wawona was sitting in two inches of water, especially this corner here, no water leaked into the tent at all because the seam taping by the north face was just so thorough. On the other hand, for the base camp, if you take a closer look at the flooring, the blue fabric here is actually made of inverted seams that are not taped. I was curious about these seams, so I sprayed water directly onto the tent body and not the rain fly, like so. And I noticed that after an hour or so, there was some leaking through these seams right here at the corners. So if this base camp had gone through the same flooding heavy rain test as the Wawona, it probably would have leaked. Actually, another reason why the Wawona is better for rainy days is because it has the biggest, most awesome vestibule ever, which is super useful for storing wet gear that you may have. 
I had plenty of livable space inside the Wobonus vestibule. The tallest height here measures about 74 inches, and the shortest height at the other end is about 65 inches. This is still taller than my height, so I found that I could stand completely upright throughout the entire vestibule. In fact, I could fit two camping chairs and still have plenty of leftover space for a big camping table. This is definitely not the case in my base camp. While the front vestibule is pretty big, and I could easily fit two REI camping chairs in it, the back vestibule couldn't even fit one camping chair. In fact, when I tried to fit just an REI stool into the vestibule, I couldn't even sit upright. As you can see, my head and my back are pressing up against the fabric of the vestibule door here. So for livability inside the vestibule, the Wawona wins hands down. Now, while I found both the Wawona and Basecamp pretty on par for quality, there's one major difference, the quality of the poles. Easily the better quality poles are the Wawonas, which is DACMX, top of the line type of aluminum poles. These poles not only snap together super easily, but they are also a lot stronger than regular aluminum poles. In the weeks that I spent testing my Wawona 6, through crazy rains and some winds, none of my poles bent at all, even in the slightest. On the other hand, the base camp has just regular aluminum poles, not DACMX. So these are not as strong, a little bit softer, and are more likely to bend after some extended use. For example, not my base camp, but for my Wonderland 6. With also just regular aluminum poles, I found that quite a few of my poles bent quite a bit after some use. The stronger poles of the Wobona also means that wind protection is better. I was able to test my Wobona 6 through 50 and maybe 20 mile per hour winds and it held up like a champ. A friend of mine also used his Wobona 6 through 50 mile per hour wind and here's the state of the poles after. Honestly, still not too bad and not even as bent as my Wonderland regular aluminum poles, which didn't even go through a strong wind test. So I think the Wawona trumps the base camp here. Also, when I was testing my Wawona, it really helped that I had almost the entire tent guide out and it has 11 guide out points for 11 guide lines. On the other hand, the base camp has only 6 guide out points for 6 guide lines, which is about half the Wawona, so not as good for wind protection. And here are some other smaller differences between the base camp and the Wawona. Wobona. Honestly, I found the Wobona much easier to pack away than the base camp. I never had any issues with my Wobona 6, and the entire process takes just 14 minutes. It's so user-friendly because the carry bag is really nice, it's top-loading, and the opening of the bag is super big so you can easily get everything back in. On the other hand, the base camp has a super annoying stuff sack. It's really not very big at all, and it's a side-loading stuff sack. This made packing everything in a little bit of a struggle, especially if you roll everything up together and try to squeeze everything in all at once. Also, the Wawona has a slightly higher peak height, coming in at 77 inches. On the other hand, the base camp has just 73 inches of peak height. Overall, while there are some minor differences between the base camp and the Wawona, I think it's important to take note only of the important major differences between the two, which is mainly the base camp being more of a 3 plus season tent, the Wawona being more of a 3 season tent, plus maybe the pole quality as well, all of which I've already explained somewhere in the middle of this video. For a more in-depth look at how the Wawona and Basecamp compare not just to each other, but to other six-person tents in the market, check out this video right here. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next one.